On March 31, 2015, the University of Houston held an alumni dinner honoring Dr. Manmohan Singh Kausi and his wife, Dr. Marie Louise Schubert Kausi. This is an audio recording of the speakers at the event with a slideshow of various pictures of Dr. and Mrs. Kausi. Although lengthy, this recording provides a glimpse of how the university collaborates with industry to ensure a first-rate engineering curriculum. It also provides an interesting glimpse of Dr. Kausi's unique personality. The opening remarks are by Dr. Jaganath Rao, Associate Chair of the Mechanical Engineering Department. Dr. Kelsey follows with a speech expressing his gratitude to the University of Houston for the influence the institution and its professors have had on his career. The closing remarks are by Dr. Joseph Tedesco, the Dean of the Cullen College of Engineering. The recording, which begins now, unfortunately misses the beginning of Dr. Rao's opening remarks. Growing up, he was called Happy by his family, presumably the close resemblance to this word, uh, word to happy is just a happy coincidence. Kalsi attended uh, Punjab Engineering College in India. Not well known is that Kalsi is a very talented painter. While in college, he put his hand in a best painting competition, and despite competing with many art majors, Kalsi won the best artist award. But fortunately for us, in our college and the engineering profession, he has kept art only as a hobby. And came to US to do his MS in mechanical engineering in 1967. Because he graduated with his MS in 1970, and during this time he would often attend the meetings managed by the International Students Office at US. Here in those days, uh, many church-going ladies would bring sandwiches and other food items for international students to lessen their homesickness and to make them more comfortable here uh, at your fetch. I note with some amusement that uh, in those days the total population of Houston, of, of Indian students in the entire Houston area was perhaps around 300. We have many more than that just in our college right now. Uh, during those weekly international office meetings, Kalsi met Marie Louise, an international philosophy student from Germany. They married shortly before Kalsi graduated with his MS. Kalsi worked as an engineer in a couple of companies and was steadily promoted to higher and higher ranks. While doing that, he observed that engineers often used ASME standards uh, without fully understanding the theory and the science behind those standards. This prompted him to take additional classes in our department. <coughs> Enough for faculty at that time, <coughs> who is here today as well, Professor Larry Whitty, uh, encouraged him to do his PhD. Well, Kalsi was understandably reluctant. He by then was raising a family, three kids. Um, but the department was able to offer Kalsi um, the waiver of the residency requirements, which was a little bit of a relief. Kalsi then earned his doctorate in 1975 under the guidance of Professor Fazitas, who had a tremendous influence on him. Unfortunately, Professor Fazitas, Kalsi's PhD advisor, passed away shortly before Kalsi launched his own company in 1978, Kalsi Engineering Incorporated. After that, the rest as they say is history. Kalsi's company has grown from strength to strength and is known for providing innovative solutions to key engineering problems in several sections, uh, nuclear industry, oil and gas, among others. Kalsi's company's focus is on valve and seal technologies. Both technologies rely heavily upon the fundamentals of tribology which Professor Fazeng has taught. Based upon insights gained from his graduate research work here at UFH, Kalsi developed a hydrodynamic seal for very harsh applications in the drilling industry. Over the years, Kalsi and his staff have provided many innovations, further innovations, that have dramatically expanded seal performance and life. Some of this further work has been performed in collaboration with researchers here at the University of Houston. Kalsi has kept close contact with our department throughout the years and has always, always wanted to give back. He has long served on an industrial advisory board, as you know. The college's 
ELB, the Leadership Board, and in many other ways also. His scholarship donations are responsible for the conference attendance of numerous students over the years and have helped them purchase laptops, among other things. In fact, uh, one of the major curriculum changes that we implemented in our undergraduate BSME program starting just this past fall was a direct result of Kelsey's persistence and input. And we added courses in finite elements and machine design as required courses in our degree that uh, Kelsey had been uh, uh, championing for quite a while. Bottom line, Kelsey has cared for our department and for a very long time. Uh, we could not ask for a better friend. Uh, finally, I want to underscore Kelsey's generous gift to our department, a half million Kelsey professorship that honors the memory of Professor Fazekas. So with this, I ask Dr. Kelsey to come to the stage, accept this small little momentum of this crowd, and accept our applause. And I And the person who's going to give me the cue is going to be my wife. Okay, you know, when I spoken too much, you can raise one hand. When I speak it even more, then you raise two hands. They say, okay. Thank you. You know, one of the things I would like to say is that this place, this, this library, first of all, the University of Houston, this library, especially this library, has a very special significance in my life. It was October, I think it was either late September, I think it was October. I was attending the class in the building that no longer exists, they just tore it down. And I had taken, I was taking back to back classes, 7 to 8.30, 8.30 to 10. At 10 o'clock I'm headed towards the student center to uh, go and set up an Indian booth. There was going to be an uh, international exhibition. So, I'm going, coming straight from the Cullen College of Engineering in this direction and I see a person who I have seen before every Wednesday at the free lunches that we got from the from the International Student Organization, the church lady brought free sandwiches. So I had seen that person and that was Marie Louisa. I didn't know her name but I had my eyes on her. <laughs> so I'm going <laughs> this way and she's going at right angles to me and I paced my speed to the point I'll intersect her <laughs> at the moment <laughs> when we just come across. <laughs> then I said, oh, hello, you going to the student center? Yes, okay. My name is Kelsey, what is your name? He said, my name is Isa. I said, Isa, that's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote it down. And so she made it very sure and very clear that she comes in a visa. She had two children, or she was herself, Course. Then she had two children. They were at that time two and four years old. When I married, they were three and five a year later. And Eastern was the eldest child. And she was being taken care of some other international students while Isa was setting up a German booth. And I'm setting up my Indian booth. So she's taking the stuff from her car to the German booth. So this library, this right outside this here, has a very special significance to my. Uh, life, to my professional career, and to my personal goals that I've been able to achieve. Number one. Okay. <laughs> no hands in. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, that's the introduction to, to our meeting. And of course, I want to thank Isa just as much as I'm thanking everybody else for supporting me to be able to pursue my goals, do the research at the university, and uh, actually go on to a PhD coursework which would have required you know being away from home uh, while I'm working full time and the children are there. So that that required there was not even a doubt, not even a hesitation in her mind. She says, absolutely, if you want to pursue it, go for it. And that's the kind of a support and the uh, that I've involved, enjoyed throughout my life, which has been a great, great element of you know my professional success. Now I would like to thank, first of all, uh, Professor Fazikas 
I would have really liked to name this chair not Dr. Marie Louisa and Mohan Espelsi. I would have liked to name it Fazika's chair because he had such a strong influence on my professional trajectory. That's a word that one I would like to use. Lanny Gilly would have liked for me to use that word. <laughs> okay. So the trajectory because the very first course that I took here was called Mechanics of Fiction, Wear and Lubrication. And it was ME672. And uh, another one was ME671. He taught two courses that I took the same semester. And the second, second one was Mechanics of Material Failure. But the uh, Mechanics of Friction, Wear and Lubrication, it turned me on. He also introduced me to the word tribology, which was unheard of at that time in the, in the professional world. Uh, tribology, which is, the, of course, the science of friction, of rubbing surfaces, comes from the Greek word. Yeah? Is that correct? He's right. <laughs> so he's right. Yes. I confirm. Correct. So, in any case, he introduced the word tribology, but the idea of what friction wear and lubrication and how that really is such a big unknown in so many mechanical pieces of equipment. And the better understanding of that would lead to much more uh, predictability, reliability, and longevity of that equipment. So, and one of the things that I, that I saw that this professor was quite unusual. He really taught with a passion that I have not seen in too many professors. And that passion was coming from the fact that he had done a lot of things in the industry. He had accomplished a lot as a professor, uh, as, as, a, as an engineer. He had risen from the ranks of being an engineer, design engineer, etc., to being a chief engineer of two of the very major firms, including Gurley Brakes in England. And he wrote his paper on the theory and mechanics of uh, brakes and friction, and that was published unabridged in the Society of Automotive Engineers, even though it was about that thick. They had a restriction of about 10 pages or 9 pages. They published that entire thing. So, I'm saying that because really, he is the person who influenced me to think about complex phenomena and how to model it by, its, by very simplistic terms. Don't try to make it complicated. Express it in simplistic terms. And amongst many other things, when I started to look for a master's thesis, as already uh, uh, Professor Rao introduced the idea that, uh, that he taught me some of the, the courses, but one of the, when I was looking for a thesis, he says, as a chief engineer, we had some play money at American Machine and Foundry. Even though it was not our main product line, uh, I had disclosed an idea of an O-ring which can be put in a slanted groove, and as you rotate the shaft, it will create a hydrodynamic lubrication. Okay, so as soon as he said, instead of you know uh, just being a straight O-ring, slanted, the rotational velocity will create a wedging action <coughs> which will create a hydroplane. So the idea sounds simple. Intuitively, it appealed to me right away. He says, we tested it, and it failed. It didn't work. So it's unfinished business for me. He says, unfinished business, really, it was, it failed because we had not done a homework. The homework would have been an analytical model that can predict the effect of all the variables that would control the film thickness generation. Just like a tire slips on a wet road, you can predict what speed, what pressure, what load it will take to predict it. That kind of theory had not been developed for the slanted loading. He says, if you want to take on a master's thesis, develop this analytical model. That's what I did. And it was a fantastic experience for me to be able to, to dig into it, look at the fundamentals of everything that was not necessarily being taught as courses here, but simulating the information, develop the theory, apply it, and then I said, I would like to also confirm it by testing. He said, well, for thesis, it's not like, wow, you already have done the work. Uh, but he said, that's fine. It will take a little longer. So I did the testing, confirmed the theory, and that was to me the very first experience of our scene. Look at this friction. I tested two warnings. One was straight, with the pressures going from 0 PSI up to 1,000 PSI turning at an RPM of about 200 RPM, 100 to 200, 300. It failed in 10 hours, standard O-ring. I put the same O-ring in a slant, which I had calculated to what the magnitude of the slant should be, what the lubricant viscosity should be, what the speed should be, what the durometer hardness should be, and if that is the case, I should predict a film thickness of, let's say, 10 to 20 micro inches under these conditions. Okay, I applied it, I tested it, the friction was 
dramatically lower. It was like one tenth to one twentieth of the friction of the other one. Such a dramatic improvement and it just gave me a very, very good feeling that not only analysis but also confirmation by experiment is, is something here that I can take and be able to build upon and hopefully result in something in the long term which will be a commercial and a proprietary product. These were ideas that Professor Fizik had already set up. If you do more homework, this can be a proprietary product. And so that's just to, to let you know. His background, his influence, okay. So when I started my own, first of all, I would not only start and stop at Professor Fizika, even though he had the most dominant influence on my, my career. There are many other professors who taught me things here at the University of Houston, which I would say even the best colleges would have a hard time matching. I have professors, I can name a few, who are here, present today, even though they have retired. We start with Professor Witte, who taught me heat transfer. I also took a first course in nuclear engineering, probably the only semester it was ever taught. Because WTM valve, when I was working, they were going to the nuclear valve industry, so I wanted to take that course. So he taught, taught that course. It was very important. Uh, professor, and, and I wanted to, to learn about valves, Theory of plates and shells. There were a solid mechanics department that was very, very strong. We had Professor Castellano, Metalopoulos, and so on and so forth. But Dr. Wheeler taught mathematical theory of velocity. Dr. Wheeler. I said, mathematical theory of velocity. Okay, material. What's the reason for learning mathematical theory? And he showed, we just, I discussed with him, he showed the power of mathematics is so strong that you can predict without making too many assumptions, very simple assumptions, things that you really could not believe that, the, that they can be predicted. And the method of, I took a course number one, Mathematical Theory of Velocity, so I enjoyed it. I took the second course, Mathematical Theory of Velocity two, I enjoyed it. And then, lo and behold, he offered Mathematical Theory of Velocity three, and I took that <laughs> one. <too. laughs> that was fun. That was really, really fun. It, uh, <coughs> showed me that not only you have to rely on numerical methods of computation, but also looking at the closed form methods of coming up with solutions that really one does not even think are possible. Uh, then, I can talk about Professor Benrock. He's here. Where's Professor Benrock? Yeah. Right here. Okay. Now, I've learned mathematical theory of philosophy, I've learned strength of materials equations and all the other stuff. Then I'm talking about, well, the valves are not these simple assumption of sh shapes, they are very different. I work for a valve company. Now how the heck do I analyze stresses of these here? There's some cookbook formulas and other things, but I would like to more precisely predict the stresses. And I've been reading about at that time in aerospace industry, they're using finite element methods. Okay, finite element methods, that turns me on. Because you can take any complex shape, break it down to simple elements and you can predict the performance of. Okay, if you can do that, well, you can just compile any, any complex shape. And if you've done that homework right on the fundamental equations, and the assemblage is right, you should be able to predict it, except I didn't know how to do it. Professor Benoit taught a course, which was again a special course, probably taught only once, that's a method. Had never been taught here before, and there was an introduction to finite element analysis. He taught heat transfer, but I took it upon myself to write that for solid mechanics because I'm designing valves. Not, well, heat is okay, but valves, I was unable to tonight. So he guided me towards that. So that was very important in my being able to learn things that I've been able to professionally apply and succeed on and, and getting benefit from. So I talked about Professor Fizikas, Professor Witte, Professor Wheeler, Benroth, let's see. Matt Franchak comes around. He, didn't, he never taught me anything, except, you know, he said, you know, I would like to be able to, it would be wonderful for the university to start collaborating with us. I so, said, well, that, that's a great idea, but my, you know, and I, I, I'm very selfish. I would like to be able to collaborate as long as I get the benefit as well. So, in funding the research, I said, my goal is to be able to further the analytical model that we develop for predicting the performance of the seals. I want to be able to have more complex geometry that we are thinking about, and we only rely on testing, the analytical models have lagged behind. And uh, is there anybody at the university who can, who can you know, help? He said, well, you know, there's many capable professors, but you, none of them is working on this area of typology or hydrodynamic lubrication. You have to do the homework. 
You have to go back and I would recommend maybe you start with Professor Ralph Metcalf. And where's Ralph? There he is. Okay. So he, he gave me a little hint. You know, he said, you need to prepare. You need to do the homework so that you can convince him because he's already pretty busy with the research on many other areas, you know. And for him to be able to find this problem interesting, you've got to make it interesting. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> so he, he gave me a good hint. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So I prepared, you know, all the references and all the other stuff, and I asked for an appointment and uh, went there, and Professor Metcalf gave me the time. And, uh, and lo and behold, he starts to get turned on <laughs> by the problem and the solution and the unfinished business and the, that I want to be able to take to the next stage. So that was uh, that's Professor Metcalf. And not only he helped me, I think actually he helped then uh, Aaron Ritchie, who's sitting right there. As a, he was working for us as a, as a, as a mechanical engineer. And uh, he was interested in doing his graduate research. And I needed somebody who's going to be able to understand these complexities and provide numerical solutions to the problems that previously could not be solved. So he got his advisorship <coughs> under Professor Metcalf, and Aaron gets a lot of credit for taking the technology further. And uh, that continued on under the guidance of Professor Ralph Metcalf. And uh, Mithal Mystery, who's right here, uh, he, he did his also master's thesis under his guidance, and we have benefited from it tremendously. I think it, we do extensive amount of research. Okay, and uh, before I go, of course, Joe Tedesco, Pradeep Sharma and Rishal Dandlevi. They, they were instrumental in making sure, well, you know, you, you, uh, we understand you want some results, but we would like for you to have a professorship. And the reason for this is because the professorships allows us to attract faculty like the one that you admire, physicists, okay? To admire them, we need to have a chair, okay? For you to be able to do it, you know, it will, it will encourage others to be able to do it. So they convinced me that not only I need to fund year to year what I need to do, which I've been doing before, but create a professorship. Thank you, Professor uh, Russell Dan Levy and, and also uh, Joe Tedesco and Pradeep Sharma. And that was very, very good. So I'm glad that I was able to do it. And uh, we will make sure that this really does bring in a good faculty member, additions, so that the, the good lessons that I learned from Professor Fazika by the excellent example of his experience, et cetera, will continue by everybody here, continue to, to uh, you know, have another professor of a higher caliber that comes on board. The last one, I want to all make a special acknowledgement and thanks for the team that I have at Kelsey Engineering. It is unparalleled. It's a small company, but we do big things. Uh, we have uh, really uh, quite a, uh, you know, a great team in terms of, if you look at the, what are the, the items that they do, many cases, the general goal is defined. I did not see one hand yet, so I'm okay like that. So, so, so I go. So the team, the I feel the tension now. <laughs> so so the, the team, in this case, is given the freedom to be able to do what I believe is unfinished business because I think it's never done. Uh, you know, if you really think that you have achieved the goal of uh, having developed a product that's meeting all the, the requirements, then you will be beaten by another competitor who will think more smartly than you are. So my internal motto has been, we are going to be our own fearless competitors. So I have encouraged each one of us to think about how, what we're going to do, how we're going to improve all what we have done, and go a step further. And uh, I also give them the freedom to make decisions. I don't have to be involved in every decision. I allow, allow them to take risks. Many of the things don't work. Many of the things fail. And that freedom is required. So to me, it's a very important ingredient of the success, but the motivation, the great mental capacity, intellectual capacity, and the guidance that they receive from, not only internally from each other by challenging, uh, but also from the university is phenomenal. With that, I would just like to say thank you very much. I'm uh, very, very glad, I'm humbled that uh, I'm being given this special appreciation and acknowledgement. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm very proud that this came from the University of Houston, and we're celebrating in the library where I met my wife. <laughs> so thank you, Isa. <laughs>
Kelsey, I'd just like to recognize you as one of our as one of our most generous, loyal, and passionate alumni. Um, I mean, you've been supporting our program for at least 15 years, minimum. And um, you, you hire our students, you support our faculty, you support our graduate students. I couldn't ask for anything more from alumni. And now this gift, and, and, and you know, I'm a little bit confused here because now it's not the Kelsey, it's not the Kelsey endowed chair. I don't think that's right. I think we need a Kelsey. <laughs> so Russell and I will be back. Talk about Kelsey professor. So please expect us. But also, I, I, I admire your passion, and I like to relate this story. You know, about a year and a half ago, we had an ELB meeting, and you know, mechanical engineering. The student enrollment is just exploding, and but their faculty hasn't grown as much. And so you were asking me the question, why don't you hire more faculty? And I said, well, we are. I said, well, you're the dean. You should just go out and hire them. I go, well, you know, it, it really doesn't work that way. Said, what do you mean it doesn't work that way? When I want to hire somebody, I go out and hire them, and they've been here in two weeks. I said, well, there's this process in academia called shared governance. Why? 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 Wait a minute. And I said, well, you know, you've got to form a committee. The committee's got to solicit applications. They've got to review the application. We might get 100 applications. We've got to bring them all on the campus. Everybody's got to meet them and agree that this is the person we want to hire. And so uh, I think it was a difficult concept for you to understand, but you finally got it. <laughs> and I appreciate your, your patience and support in working with us because it, it really is going to make a tremendous difference now. And I think once we, Russell and I, talk to you about the Kelsey professorship, that will make it even bigger. <laughs> and I'm sure you will agree, we've got to have the Kelsey name associated with the mechanical engineering department. So Kelsey, thank you so much for your support, your enthusiasm, and your great generosity. Thank you so much.